Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor. I believe I'm going to show you something today that many of you have, that I've never demonstrated to many of you, to, to truly make you comprehend just how huge um, what is coming is going to be. Um, and, and it's really just part of it, but how massive what is coming, what, what you're about to be a part of if you are like an owner of XRP or one of the better digital assets leading into what's coming. Um, and, and I don't think I've shown it to you in this way, but an article came out today um, that, that is, that is going to lead me to uh, a way to show you and make you comprehend what is coming. <clears throat> but first, I want to show you, this is from Bon Crip. He sent me this. Um, I missed this yesterday. I talked about this uh, worth uh, the Power 100 for 2018 from Worth Magazine. But it says, from bankers to business people, pundits to presidents, meet the top, the 100 most powerful men and women in global finance for 2018 who are changing the world. And he says, look at number 44. Crypto is here to stay. Well, I didn't look at number 44. Yesterday, I told, showed you that Kelly Loeffler, that's starting backed, is on that list. There's actually two more. He talks about number 44. Uh, the other one was a lady from a blockchain company. And I can't, her name was Blythe Masters is what her name was, but she's from a block, blockchain company. I think she left the company since, um, but she was the CEO and she was listed. So there's three that I saw. There were three people and or companies having to do with blockchain that were listed. But the one Bond Crip is referring to, I'll show you right now. <laughs> this is interesting. Satoshi Nakamoto comes in at number 44. Says the price of Bitcoin is highly volatile, surging to almost 20,000 in December 2017, then plummeting to 6,800 by September 2018. Nakamoto is believed to control eight, what does that say, 980,000 Bitcoins, roughly 5% of all Bitcoin that can ever be mined. Give him a net worth, giving him a net worth of 19.4 billion. Um, I didn't see this going out. 19.4 billion at, at the currency's high point. Um, it's also enough of the cryptocurrency to allow Nakamoto to flood the market and tank Bitcoin's value if he decides to cash out, either for profit or to prove some kind of philosophical point, however unlikely that might be. And this is one of the many reasons that uh, Bitcoin, in my opinion, is not the one to be in. But uh, the point here is this guy is anonymous and he's ranked 44th in the world in terms of financial players. This is not, this genie's not going back in the bottle. I hope you all realize that by now. Um, that is what this is really about. That's why I wanted to show it to you. Okay, next I wanted to show you this. This is interesting. This is an article, uh, Bitcoin versus traditional assets. How does crypto's 10 year performance sync up? And they use the word Bitcoin and I often tell you when they say Bitcoin, it just means crypto. But I just wanted to show you a couple of these charts they had in here. Here they were talking about, they were trying to illustrate the point of what happens when an ETF is introduced. You know, Bitcoin, they've been trying to get a Bitcoin ETF um, passed by the SEC. And as I've said many times, it's just a matter of when. It's not a matter of whether. They're going to do it. It's just a matter of when they do it. They're going to do it because this is, a, this is a global thing. And there are countries around the world who are starting their own ETFs and the U.S. is not going to be left behind. No matter how bad the bureaucrats would, would like to keep this from happening, they're not going to not let it happen because the, the people that are in charge of the money in this country will make them create a Bitcoin ETF before it's over. It's as simple as that because the people that, the money people are the ones that run the world. And that's no different in the U.S. or anywhere else. Um, but this, it, gold and Bitcoin prices uh, before ETF. Um, this up here is a gold chart from 1970 to 2000. They created the first ETF around 2000. Um, and then it shows you a Bitcoin. This is Bitcoin's price 
2017 to 18 and then where it is now if you go down here and you look at the gold price after the ETF it says here that the um, let's see where did they talk about it? right here um, they let they introduced the gold ETF prices increased to nearly $1,600 from a low of 332 this is what happened when that gold ETF was introduced in 2000 it went straight up okay and then over time eventually it's going to of course come down and do the whole thing but it ran up on that gold ETF and it did that from 2000 all the way for the next basically 10 years it, it went up um, and then they, they had another interesting chart down here this is Amazon stock prices in 1998 and 2000 now What's interesting about the par the only parallel here, there, you know, a lot of these guys on TV, they would love to compare the internet bubble to what happened in crypto in 2018. And I, as I've said many times before, we haven't even begun to see anything anywhere close to a bubble in crypto. And the reason is that the most that's ever been in crypto is about 800 and something billion dollars. At the height of this, when Amazon was riding high in 1999, 2000, at this, the the stock bubble had gotten to somewhere between nine and I've heard different estimates nine and thirteen trillion dollars, and that was in ninety nine and two thousand. In today's dollars, because our governments of the world print money out the wazoo, uh, in today's dollars, that nine to thirteen trillion dollars is more like twenty to forty trillion dollars. And add to that that this is not the internet of information like that was. This is the internet of money, of value, which is going to be even bigger. Okay, and I'll show you later in this in this video why and how it's going to be so much bigger, um, and it's going to be more to the tune of forty to a hundred or more trillion. Oh, oops, drop my phone, sorry. Um, but anyway, these these are the this is the Amazon stock prices. Now here's what that dot com bubble did have in common with what happened in crypto in 2018. What it did have in common is here you had Amazon rose with a lot of non companies, companies that basically bought a dot com name, got venture capital firms to throw millions of dollars at them. I've talked about pets dot com. But they really didn't have a company behind them. They rode a technology wave that was based on nothing. But there were companies like Amazon and eBay and Priceline that were actually real companies that were coming up in the dot-com wave. Well, when the collapse happened, those good companies went down in price, just like you see here, with the non-companies like Pets.com. Um, they they rode it down with them. Well, anybody that was paying attention was not going to sell their Amazon or their eBay because they knew. I mean, there were numbers that backed up what these companies were doing and things like that. Whereas the pets.coms were obviously nothing. Well, look at what happened for those of for the people who were paying attention. Um, from that point. Amazon went up 24,633% over the course of the next 10 or 10 plus years. 24,000 plus percent. Okay? And that's because it was the real deal Holyfield, as they say around here. Evander Holyfield, for those of you that don't know the boxer, Evander Holyfield is from Georgia. Uh, he was He's the guy that Mike Tyson bit his ear off twice, I think, bit, two, bit his ear twice. Anyway, he was the uh, heavyweight champion, and now he has a son who is a running back for, for Georgia. But anyway, that's a, that's a saying, real deal Holyfield. But anyway, um, so you can see that just because you have, uh, just because sometimes it's irrational in the way that, in this example, a ripple would go down with some of these ridiculous ICOs that were that came out that were really just in many cases frauds trying to make a quick buck. Ripple had to ride down with them, but Ripple's going to ride up into out off into the sunset, and it's going to be a giant um, uh, or XRP that is. Um, so anyway, they they showed a few charts in here, but anyway, I I, th I thought those charts uh, kind of painted a pretty good picture. Next, I wanted to show you something interesting from the news uh, yesterday. 
Apple set to open 8% lower after slashing Q1 guidance. I wanted to illustrate a point here, a couple of points. This is, a, is a, I believe, from a Bloomberg machine. I got this off of a Zero Hedge article. I want to show you all of the companies and the analysts who had buy ratings on Apple before that news came out. All of these guys had buy, outperform, overweight, however they say it. And they had, these are their price targets for Apple stock. That, and these are, these are big companies, JP Morgan. Um, and then you'll see Morgan Stanley on here, Morningstar, HSBC, uh, RBC Capital, Piper Jeffrey, Baird, all of these huge people, they had, they had their buy ratings on Apple. And I just wanted to show you that just to illustrate that these people say a lot of things, but that doesn't mean that they know what they're talking about or that they're right. And so everybody's got an opinion, but I also wanted to show you this because of something I said the other day. I mean, we've had many people in the XRP community online um, and, and over the course of the last year, many people who are the same people who were making plenty of predictions as long as the market was up, who then started talking bad about anybody who made any predictions. Well, the news that I have for you folks is that the, the financial world, the financial world that crypto is now entering, which I'm about to show you, the financial world that crypto is now entering, they make money off of putting buy and sell ratings on stocks, and it will be the same way for crypto. Um, they put price targets. It will be the same way for crypto. I've told you before, you will have S&P, you will have Moody's, you will have Fitch. They will all be doing ratings on crypto. In fact, I showed a video a while back where Fidelity Digital Assets said in a video that they were behind the scenes coming up with, with models on how to value cryptocurrencies and digital assets. It's coming, it's gonna come, and so the online community needs to go ahead and get ready because you're gonna to have to be, price projections and buy and sell ratings are gonna be a part of this world sooner rather than later. So get ready. You shouldn't be too offended by price projections but for that reason because it's coming and it's as the market grows up, we're all going to have to grow up with it because it's coming. Um, but here's here's the biggie. This is what I wanted to show you. This is from C3 Nick. He puts out this tweet this morning and I did not realize this was going to happen this early. This is the DX exchange. They're the ones that are using NASDAQ te technology and they're out of Estonia. He says Estonia based DX exchange revealed today that it will be going live on January 7th, 2019. Well, I thought I knew they were going to list XRP as one of their digital assets and like Ethereum, I think, and Bitcoin and maybe a handful of others. What I did not know is this part. First exchange to offer tokenized stocks of some of the largest publicly traded companies. Okay, now this is where the rubber meets the road. The DX exchange to go live and launch tokens backed by real stocks. The, the new stocks include the likes of Google, Facebook, Amazon, Intel, and many others. And then Anthony Pompliano from Morgan Creek Capital tweets this. Every stock, he, he's talking about this, this same um, piece of news because apparently Tesla is going to be one of the stocks too. Every stock, bond, currency, and commodity will be digitized just a matter of time. I did not know that it was going to begin this early, people, but I want to show you this and I want to make a point. I've shown you some of these numbers before, but I want you to truly, if you don't listen to anything else I've said in this video, I want you to listen and listen really good now. Right now, this is a $132 billion, market, billion dollar market. That is all of crypto. XRP being the greatest digital asset ever created and the best of all of them, and everybody knows it. $132 billion, the highest it's ever gotten. When, when XRP was at $3.50, was 800 and something billion. These are the exchanges that come that that are responsible for those billions of dollars in in volume up to 800. 130 130 billion right now. Okay? Now I want to show you now we've been told, we know now. I mean it's a fact. It's happening. You are about you are about to see 
Stocks, bonds, currencies, commodities, all money, all money. Well, it's going to be tokenized, thus making you now like like if you went on to an online um, stock exchange right now and you bought or, or you sold ten thousand dollars worth of any stock, they will tell you that it takes about three days to settle. In other words, you sell it out of that ten thousand dollars worth of stock, you can't touch that ca cash for three days. It's not money to you that you can actually do anything with for three days. The world is about to become a world where not only can you sell out of that $10,000 worth of stock and it's immediately liquid because it's tokenized stock, but then it's immediately movable and movable through, it could be XRP in four seconds anywhere in the world, okay? Now, but the important thing for you to understand as a holder of XRP is that right now your XRP sits on these exchanges around the world, these crypto exchanges around the world, and it sits there with $132 billion worth of other digital assets. But here's what's about to happen. Your XRP, over the course, starting on January 7th with the DX exchange, they are opening Pandora's box. And here, your, your XRP is going to over the course of this year into the, the next, for the next, this year into the next, say, two to five years, the money that your XRP is going to be traded with side by side. Imagine a world, and I want to show you the monies of the world because remember what Pompliano said every stock, bond, currency, commodity will be digitized, which what that means, let's say silver, okay, let's add, remember, we're dealing with 132 billion right now. Add 17 billion. We've got the cryptocurrency at 132 billion. Let's skip these things here. Um, let's add currencies. Add 7.6 trillion. Gold that is digitized. Okay. Add 7.7 .7 trillion. The stock markets of the world add 73 trillion. Gold, the global money supply. I guess currencies, 36.8 trillion. Global debt, bonds. Remember, Pompliano, we've been saying it all year. Bonds become digitized, which means they become liquid, which means that you can go from XRP to bonds to stocks to whatever. 215 trillion. Real estate, I've told you many times. Imagine a world where real estate is tokenized and it's put on these exchanges side by side with XRP and all these other digital assets. $217 trillion. Are you starting to get the picture, people? And we're not even talking about XRP's utility. We're, to we're strictly talking about the tokenization of the world right now. And what I'm telling you is that your XRP is going to be on exchanges across the world with trillions and trillions of dollars there someone is going to be able to sell out of their facebook stock and go right into xrp the world is about to change and you if you're invested in xrp or any of say the real the good digital assets that are going to that are going to be hatched into this tokenized world you're a part of like i've told you many times two to three this is a chance of two to three lifetimes period i'm the digital asset investor i'm not an investment advisor this is for entertainment purposes only please subscribe and hit the like button and tell your friends and family that ripples xrp will so soon be traded in a multi-trillion dollar market thanks for listening